I can, New York, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, uh, Rochester, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you now. All right, good, good morning, everybody. Uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Whitney Clark. I'm the Deputy Secretary of State for Business Development. Um, this is a meeting of the New York State Real Estate Board. Um, so before we begin, uh, New York, I uh, probably see we have a new person at the table. We have a new board member, Neil Garfinkel. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Whitney. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Um, and I'd like to thank outgoing board member Joe Burko, who served on the board since for almost eight years, since 2018. So um, we wish him well and thank him for his service. Okay, let's start. Actually, start in Rochester. Uh, board members, if you could please introduce yourself for the record. Rochester. I see some. Hi. Well, let's try that again. Hi, Hi gentlemen. Could you uh, please introduce yourselves for the record? Dan Hartnett, board member. David Dan. Dworkin, board member. Good morning. Hey, in New York City. Diane Ramirez, board member. Well, I was already introduced, but Neil Carfinkel, board member. <laughs> Sorry, Neil. Okay, and do, uh, do we have DOS staff down in New York as well? Um, Jack hey, David. Lowe. Jack Lowe. Um, Arnita Gant, Department of State. Dave Mossberg, Department of State. All right, good morning, everybody. And in Albany, let's go around the table. Um, I've introduced myself, so Adaya. Adaya Murdoch, Department of State. Mary Jo Moore, Department of State. Cindy Berlin, Department of State. Uh, Duncan McKenzie, board member. Amy Benson, Department of State. All right, David, do we have a quorum? I'm trying to do the math now. It looks like we have six board members. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sorry, oh, one, two, six, seven, six, I believe we're one short of a quorum. Uh, the board. Okay. Yeah, we're required to have a majority of the board members currently serving on the board. So okay. there's 15 board members, two vacancies, so there's a total of 13 seated. So we need a majority of 13. We only have six. Okay. The only um, item we had on today's agenda that required a vote was approval of the meeting minutes. Um, so we'll table that for the next meeting. The first items on the agenda are the department and subcommittee reports. Arnita, do you have an update on enforcement activities for the board? Um, yes, I do. Um, these statistics that I'm giving are for the uh, months of April and May of 2018. Um, there were a total of 106 cases closed during that, uh, those months. Um, ten of those cases we closed abandoned due to um, unsuccessful attempts to contact the complainant. Um, Twenty-two cases were referred, investigated, and referred to our counsel's office for review. Five cases were closed um, due to Department of State's lack of jurisdiction in the complaint matter. Three cases were closed. And it was determined that sober action was warranted on those. Five cases were closed without a merit um, requiring any action by the Department of State. Three cases were closed um, where the issues, complaint issues were resolved by the parties of the complaint. Four complaints were withdrawn after being filed. Um, five complaints were closed um, where the licensee was issued a warning. 28 cases were closed. Um, we were found that there were no violations. Two cases were closed due to insufficient evidence to establish whether a violation occurred. Eight cases were closed where salespersons were having difficulties getting released from their brokers and they're, they're now released. Uh, one case was closed 
with an administrative hold, the license expired, and um, we put a hold um, for a future attempts, against any future attempts of getting licensed. Um, during that same period, April and May, we conducted 40 continuing education audits, and we found that of the 40 audits, 18 um, licensees were in compliance, 22 licensees were not in compliance, and of the 22, one um, licensee paid a fine and, and um, is now in compliance, and the other 21 was pending. Uh, that's the report. Thank you. Thank you, Arnita. Does anyone have any questions for Arnita? Uh, I do not, but I just, uh, this is David in Rochester. Uh, Dave Rumsey showed up. Um, oh, so great. We, Good morning, Dave. So we now have a quorum. Good morning. We now have a quorum. Great. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is a qualification audit um, from the education exam unit. Um, Mary Jo is going to do this for Marcy Rose, who unfortunately couldn't join us. Good morning. Um, we just recently completed our 75-hour real estate salesperson qualifying education audit of the licensees licensed in 2016. So the final statistics on that audit are that out of 72 schools included in the audit, 8,266 8, licensees were audited. Of those licensees, 7,939 or 96% were compliant. 44, which is less than 1%, chose to surrender their license, and 283, which is approximately 3%, were sent to hearing. And we recently began a 75-hour sales qualifying course audit of those licensees who became licensed from January 1st through March 31st of this year. And um, the initial response came back pretty quickly, and um, there are 927 licensees that are being audited from 21 schools, and of those 927, 466 have already been deemed to be compliant, so that's just over 50%, and we're still communicating with the schools and the licensees, so we're moving forward with that. Yeah, excellent. So. Thanks, Mary Jo. You're welcome. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Mary Jo? Okay, moving along, uh, we have another enforcement update. Uh, this one from Jack Bolello. Good morning, Jack. Good morning. I'm here to report on the real estate broker advertisement tickets. Uh, since March 28, 2018, we've conducted 20 such audits, which means that we've sent out 20 tickets to various real estate brokers statewide for um, advertising violations. And as of Friday, June 8th, uh, we've collected uh, $50,000 in fines from these brokers. And we have about uh, five or so audits pending with um, more that are going to be mailed out soon. So that's basically uh, the update. Thank you, Jack. Does anyone have any questions for Jack? Wait, wait, right. Jack, was, were there any specific um, recurring types of violations that you found? Yes. Um, we actually found the two categories. It's, we had one category would be where uh, we want the licensee's title is not described um, so that they don't, in an advertisement, the licensee is not described in the proper title as real estate salesperson, real estate broker, or associate real estate broker. And the other issue would be um, ads where not only did they list their title, uh, the license title, but they we had salespersons or associate brokers giving themselves inappropriate titles, like corporate titles, like um, president, vice president, CEO, founder, partner, etc. Okay, thank you. Well, and these are randomly done. Correct. Random check. Statewide. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Okay, action items. Uh, we have two updates from Dave Mossberg. Uh, the first is on an update of the, uh, the broker curriculum. David. Yes, thank you, Whitney. Um, so 
I'm happy to finally report that uh, the department uh, has finally adopted uh, the update to the real estate broker course curriculum. Um, the regulation is set to go into effect on September 1st, 2018. It's the uh, first uh, significant uh, update to the course curriculum, I believe in around a decade or so. Um, the course um, focus is now uh, more on areas that the board felt uh, were lacking for a, a proper broker management and operation. Um, in particular, there's a new course, uh, 16 hours devoted to agency law, license law, uh, operating a real estate office, uh, which the board felt was uh, an important area that brokers needed more uh, education on. Um, I know Mark is going to give an update on the course later on, so there's nothing more that uh, is really relevant to say with that, except that it's going to go into effect on uh, September 1st, 2018. Great, David, thank you. Does there anyone have any questions for Dave? All right, uh, David, you're up next. Uh, notice of adoption for a cease and desist zone in Chesapeake. Yes, um, so on May 21st, uh, the department filed notice of adoption to establish a new cease and desist zone uh, in Rockland County. Uh, this new zone will go into effect on July 1st, 2018, and um, is set to expire on July 1st, 2023. Uh, this new zone is uh, for the entire village of Chestnut, Vid, uh, Chestnut Ridge, uh, which I believe is in the town of Ramapo. Um, the department anticipates um, that the first list uh, will be available on the department's website starting September 1st, 2018. Uh, beginning July 1st, any homeowner within the village uh, can register um, so that uh, real estate brokers, salespersons, and other people regularly engaged in buying and selling property um, will be on notice not to send any solicitations to those homeowners. Um, and uh, this rule does not in any way impact uh, the other zones that uh, the department currently has in effect uh, for Bronx and Queens counties. So I don't know if anyone has any questions, but uh, that's the update for the uh, Rockland County cease and desist zone. Was there a reason this particular area was um, was selected? Yes. Um, so the department, the, the process to establish a zone is a, a rather lengthy process. It requires the department to do sort of a detailed analysis of specific communities. Um, so in this particular area, the department received uh, multiple examples of um, unwanted solicitations, which were on a, a recurring basis. The department also held a uh, very well attended public hearing in um, Rockland County where uh, members of the public uh, provided solicitations. They spoke about their personal experience. And then after the public hearing, the department continued to receive additional evidence of the unwanted solicitations. And so after reviewing all the data, um, the department's position was that the, the people in this particular um, village uh, were receiving um, repeated and unwanted solicitations such that a zone was appropriate. Thank you. Interesting. Thank you, David. Okay, and Mary Jo uh, is actually going to give the next report for Mark Master Buno. It's an update on the broker course curriculum. Mary Jo. Okay. All right, as David Mossberg just mentioned, um, the new real estate broker course curriculum is effective September 1st. This date coincides with the qualifying course renewal term, which begins September 1st. Um, an email was sent to approved course providers on May 29th, providing them with the new course curriculum. And on the following day, May 30th, the course providers were sent another email that provided um, a course outline and the number of exam questions that ne needed to be dedicated to each of those topics. It also provided 
um, the course providers with instructions for renewing the broker course for this new term. They do have to submit new course outlines and final exams with their course approval applications. Um, and we are encouraging the schools to do so as soon as possible. Um, we'd like to get started reviewing them and, you know, so that the approvals are on place by September 1st. We're also encouraging schools to submit them online um, through our e-access and y system. Um, when doing so, they will need to answer yes, um, that there are updates to their course that they're submitting for approval. Um, all students enrolled in courses starting prior to September 1st will take the current curriculum and those starting courses on September 1st and moving forward will need to take the new curriculum. That concludes my report. Does that, anyone have any information? Questions? Thank you, Mary Jo. You're welcome. Okay, in your meeting folders are two um, meeting minutes. Board members, you could take a opportunity to review those, and then I would ask for a motion to approve. So moved. And second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The meeting minutes um, are approved. Okay, items of new business. Uh, board members, do you have any items of new business you'd like to add to our next meeting agenda? Anything, Duncan? No? Rochester? Nothing. New York? Nope. No? Okay, um, well, think of ideas. Again, we'll be in touch with you um, before the next meeting to see if uh, there's anything you would like added. Okay, public comment period. Is there any members of the public in Rochester? There is not. Okay. Uh, New York, I see some people on the side, I'm assuming they're public members. Would anyone like to make a public comment? No? Okay. Albany. Nothing? All right. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're already at the end of uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. In favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The meeting's adjourned. Um, but as you recall, our statute also requires public hearings uh, periodically uh, throughout the year. This is one of the meetings where we also have a public hearing scheduled. So I'm going to turn it over to David. Uh, thank you, Whitney. Uh, so as you indicated, uh, RPL 442I requires, in addition to the regular board meetings, uh, that the department hold one meeting in New York City, Buffalo, and Albany. Uh, the purpose of these meetings are uh, is to solicit from the public suggestions, comments, observations about real estate practice in New York. Uh, so in order for us to comply with this uh, regulation, the department is holding this meeting now. Um, so I'll ask if there's anybody in Rochester, well actually Rochester isn't on the list, so uh, Albany, whether or not there's any public comments or anyone from the public would like to say anything? No. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyone in New York City uh, would like to make a comment, suggestion, or observation about real estate practices in New York? Nope. Um, that there being no comments in either of the two locations specified by the statute, I believe we can close this public hearing for June 11th, 2018. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Dana, when are we meeting again? I believe the next meeting is October. I don't October. Know. Okay. Everyone have a good summer. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you in October. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mary Jo, when you audit the school, what do you look for? Because someone's just lagged. What do you look for? Well, we're actually auditing the licensing okay. to make sure they're, they've actually taken the 75 hour course. So, when they go on the line and they get the license, they select a few that we list in the access NY, all the schools that are approved.
You want to make that claim to have taken their course with them. Okay. The schools then tell us what they have, yeah, right. and what the um, course completion date is. All right. And, and they tell us.